Welcome back, everybody. We are going to continue dissecting what happened on Capitol Hill earlier today, this time with one of our favorite guests joining us by phone to talk more about Speaker McCarthy's ouster and who's going to replace him is Georgia Congressman and House Intel and Agriculture Committee member Austin Scott. Congressman, thank you so much for being here. Hey, thanks for having us. And it's been a sad day here in Washington for Republicans. You saw um, eight Republicans vote with 200 and some odd Democrats to remove uh, Kevin McCarthy, the Speaker of the House. Yeah. And, yes. you know, it, it, it's just a sad day. I mean, I mean, he was doing a good job as Speaker. I hope he will still go back and be our Speaker, and then we'll, you know, we'll push forward from there. But, you know, th these eight people, uh, their their demands are, are totally unreasonable. Uh, a lot of it has to do with fundraising and, you know, I mean, they're they're literally fundraising uh, on, on things they're doing that are destructive to the Republican Party and 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 what thousands and thousands and thousands of people across this country have have, have tried to accomplish and and having a backstop to the Biden agenda. And so, eight Republicans voted with with Joe Biden and the Democrats to to you know remove Kevin as speaker, and now we've got to go into conference, and, and you know, our, our goal is to get Kevin reelected. Yeah. Yes, sir. And and to what you were saying, I, I am trying to envision next steps. I'm trying to construct this plan in my head of what Republicans do going forward, and I just have this funny feeling that we're going to end up replacing Kevin McCarthy with Kevin McCarthy, maybe with a little bit different concessions, but effectively we'll be right back where we were, won't we? Well, I can I can promise you this: if it's not Kevin McCarthy, it won't be anybody that is as conservative as Kevin McCarthy. It'll be somebody that the Dems pick uh, that that's more centrist and and you know effectively has an agreement with the Democratic Party on on, on what to do. I mean, they they've made it. You know, they being a select few people um, have, have made accusations of Kevin McCarthy that the vast majority of the conference think are false. And then they have they have no evidence. They're just out there saying things. And when you're out there saying things and, and, and you're dealing with an issue that's this serious and at the same time you're sending out fundraising emails and saying, you know, I'm voting to expel McCarthy, send me money. I mean, I mean that's not a principle based argument. And so, you know, if you if you if you look at what Newt Gingrich has said, I agree with him. I mean, Matt Gates needs to be removed from the Republican conference. And and I'm going to tell you, if you let. And unless you let these eight pick the person that is the speaker, and then unless the rest of us line up with them and say, uh, "Okay, you eight get to tell us when to, you know, when to fetch and when to heal," um, you know, and, and we do everything they say, they're going to do the same thing to the next Republican speaker. Yeah, uh, there's a cycle here that may not stop. You're exactly right, sir. I want to ask about the one issue that seems to be at the heart of this beyond all of the, the political side, and that is uh, the, the need to get 12 spending bills done before the end of the fiscal year. Obviously, you didn't hit that deadline, uh, but that is something that you all are still committed to getting done, even with this interruption, even with the 45-day thing. Yep. You guys are serious about getting 12 spending bills out, right? That's not going to change. Yep, we are. We're, we're in, and look, I mean, I wish that we had moved faster on them. I don't mind saying that, but I, I also want you to know, John, some of these same people that are complaining yes. that they didn't get done voted against the rule to bring them to the floor. Yeah. So, so if you're if you're voting to prohibit us to bring them to the floor, then how can you complain about the fact that we didn't get it done in a timely manner? And and that's the hypocrisy of, of some of these people. And and it's just, John, there's there's there are 435 districts throughout the country. The idea that somebody from, you know, a district that Donald Trump won 70-30 gets to tell somebody in a district that Donald Trump didn't win but was able to win that district as a Republican and is now a member of our, of our conference, how they can and can't vote or else there are going to be consequences for them. That's not the way democracy works. That's the way authoritarians think. And these eight people, you know, are more aligned with authoritarianism than they are democracy. Congressman, to your knowledge, was there a common grievance or maybe a couple 
between these eight? I mean, I, I, I know that the CR was kind of the, the, the final straw for Congressman Matt Gates. Was it the alleged Ukraine deal that he supposedly cut with Joe Biden? What, what was the common grievance that made them all or that compelled them to do that? Let's talk about the CR for a second. I don't know what the common grievance is, but I can tell you when they sit there and vote against solutions that 95 percent of Republicans would consider a win, and and then they turn around and complain about where we end up, again, we can only lose 3.5 percent on any vote or the Democrats have control. And so if you go back to the continuing resolution that we had the other day, and I would encourage you to listen to what Jim Jordan said about it, you know, it cut spending. It secured the border. You know, it did everything that we as Republicans had said we were going to do. It did not fund Ukraine, and I'm in favor of funding Ukraine. I know, I know some people aren't, and, and they should be a standalone vote. But the, the original vote that we lost 20 Republicans on, that was the most conservative piece of legislation that we ever had an opportunity to adopt. And so, and so they won't vote for that, and then they know when you don't vote for that, then it's going to go the other way, not more conservative. It's going to go the other way, and and then they complained about it moving the other way. I mean, they've created a scenario under which, and I thought Jim Jordan did a good job of explaining this today, they've created a scenario under which nobody has any other choice because they won't vote with us on any of the other choices, and then they complain about the choice that we have to take. I mean, this is, I mean, Jim Jordan is a good, solid conservative, and Jim Jordan understands strategy. These eight people, they don't care about strategy. All they care about is fundraising. Um, So real quickly, all these investigations that were making tremendous progress, particularly the Biden one, it's going to lose some steam for a little while. How important is that? We've got about 40 seconds left. No, it's it's horrible. It's horrible what they've done. I mean, the, the... what they've done to Jamie Comer's ability, what they've done to Jim Jordan's ability, what they've done to Jason Smith's ability. I mean, these eight people are eight of the most selfish people that you could ever, that you will ever come across. They have done tremendous damage to uh, Jim and, and, and Jamie and Jason and, and their ability to carry out these investigations. Now we've got to figure out who the Speaker of the House is going to be. We were doing good things under Kevin McCarthy. We need to put Kevin back. Yeah. Deja vu. Back to January. Congressman, we know you're busy and you've got business to attend to there on Capitol Hill. We appreciate you being with us and helping us read the tea leaves. Well, tea leaves. We'll be glad to have you back on again very soon.